Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to solve a quadratic equation where the coefficient of x squared is greater than 1. Now, to do that, we need to remember how we solve quadratic equations in general, and the method for that is to equate to 0, then to factorise, and finally solve some simple equations, usually very simple equations that are linear. So what's the first thing that I need to do? Equate to zero. This equation is nice and easy to equate to zero. All I need to do is subtract eight from both sides. So here we go. First step done. Now comes the hard part. I need to factorise. I'm going to look for two numbers which multiply to give negative 24. Where does that negative 24 come from? Well, you've got a coefficient of x squared, which is 3. And you've got a constant term of negative 8. I multiply those two together. that gives me negative 24. That's why I need two numbers which multiply to give negative 24. Now, the pair of numbers I find also need to add to give negative 10. The negative 10 is a bit easier to see. It's the coefficient of x. That's why my pair of numbers need to add to give negative 10. So now I list factor pairs which multiply to give 24. Notice that each pair appears more than once. That's because the smaller number could be positive and the latter negative or the other way around. And now I'm looking for the pair which adds to give negative 10. Well, that looks like this pair here. 2 and negative 12. So now I need to split up my negative 10x into those two numbers. Here we go. I've made it plus 2x and subtract 12x. I could have, if I'd wanted to, made it subtract 12x first and then add 2x. It doesn't really matter which way round I do it. Okay, now that I've split that 10x up, I need to factorise each half of the equation separately. So I draw my dividing line in first. Now, I look at the first part, 3x squared plus 2x. My highest common factor of those two terms is x. So I'll put that outside. To obtain 3x squared, I need to multiply x by 3x. And to obtain 2x, I need to multiply x by 2. On the second half, I've got a highest common factor of 4, and I notice both of them are negative, so I'm going to make it negative 4. I multiply negative 4 by 3x to get negative 12x, and I multiply negative 4 by positive 2 in order to get negative 8. And now, if I need to, I could make a little substitution. I could say that 3x plus 2 is going to be something called b. So now I've actually got x times b
subtract 4 times b equals 0. And I can factorise that very easily. And I know that my b is in fact 3x plus 2. So I'm going to substitute that back in. OK, I've factorised it. Now what do I need to do? Well, final step. I need to solve. I've got two things multiplied together, and when they're multiplied together, it gives me zero. If you multiply two things and the answer is zero, one of them must be zero. So either 3x plus 2 is zero, or x take away 4 is zero. If x take away 4 is zero, then x is 4. That's nice and easy. Bit trick here on this side. If 3x plus 2 is 0, then 3x equals negative 2, subtracting 2 from both sides. And then I can divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals negative 2 thirds. And it looks like we're done. Except, we should of course always check our answers. So, how do I check? I'm going to take my first value, x equals 4 and substitute it into my original equation, 3x squared subtract 10x equals 8. So, here we go. I'm just going to evaluate the left hand side where all the x's are. 3 times 4 squared is 3 times 16 and then I need to uh, take away 10, take 10 times 4, which is 48, subtract 40, which is 8. And that matches with what I had on the original equation on the right hand side. So the first answer is fine. The second one was negative 2 thirds, so I'll substitute that in. negative two-thirds squared, well, I'm going to get four-ninths, and anything negative that's squared ends up positive, because negative times negative is positive. And then I've got three on the outside, subtract, I've got a negative times another negative in a moment, because I've got ten times negative two-thirds, so that's going to be plus ten times two-thirds. That was the two negatives, that one and that one. Three times four ninths. Three lots of four ninths. Well, if you're confident with cross cancelling, you can see that that's four thirds. Or, if you need to, you can write that as twelve ninths. Three lots of four ninths is twelve ninths. Plus, ten times two thirds, well that's twenty thirds. And I should be able to cancel 12 ninths down, dividing both the top and bottom by 3, I get 4 thirds. And now my fractions have a common denominator, and I can get 24 thirds, and 24 thirds is 8, which of course is what we had on the right hand side of our original equation. So both of my solutions give me 8 on the right hand side, so my answers were spot on.